Hey everyone, I have some flight footage I wanted to share along with some info on my new whoop build. But first, I wanted to start off by thanking Nick Burns and Dumb Thumbs FPV for all of their information on experimenting with different props and motors and such. This is only my third drone, so I would have been pretty lost trying to figure out what to use. My first drone was the Tiny Hawk 2, then I built a TP3, and now this one, which is the Muon 75. All of the FPV feed in this video is with the VTX set at 25 milliwatts. The first flight you're seeing is on a 300 milliamp 2S battery that I repurposed from my Tiny Hawk 2, and then I'm going to do some build talk in the middle. And then at the end of the video, I'll show some footage from a flight with a 450 milliamp 2S battery. I flashed this with Betaflight 4.2.7, and I really like the way it flew with just the defaults, but this of course is indoor, so there's not any external factors like wind, which would really reveal how untuned the quad is. But I went ahead and put the UAV tech presets on here. I really wanted to get the RPM filtering going with the 48 kilohertz PWM frequency so I could get more flight time. The only presets I didn't do were the two CLI commands for the VBAT SAG compensation and thrust linear adjustments. I just really liked the way the power and the throttle felt with the defaults and either one or both of those adjustments just took too much away. Uh, I've liked the way those adjustments felt on other quads though, just not this one. With the batteries charged to 4.2 volts per cell, the flight times I'm getting is about two and a half minutes on the 300 milliamp battery and then five and a half to six minutes on the 450 milliamp battery. But I'm looking forward to getting the 350 milliamp battery that Nick Burns and Dumb Thumbs FBV had talked about because I think that'll probably be the perfect weight and flight times that I'm personally looking to get. And I was trying to fly somewhat cautiously to maybe get some footage without crashing. And of course, when I try not to crash, the first thing I do is crash. And all the footage here is in acro mode. I know some people fly acro outside while freestyling and then angle or horizon whenever they fly whoops indoor, but I just prefer to keep it consistent and fly acro all the time and not have to switch back and forth because I've heard it takes some time adjusting to go from one to the other. And I edited this video just using the iMovie app for iPhone. And it seems like the trick to limit YouTube from reducing the quality of the flight footage too much is to include a high resolution picture or some high resolution footage within the video so that you can export it from iMovie using the 4K setting. All right, so now we'll briefly go over the build. Uh, this is the same frame that Dumb Thumbs FPV used, the Muon 75. I won't get into too much detail because he's already covered it adequately in his video. Um, and Nick Burns used the Mobula 7 V3, also known as the trash can frame. I've not tried that one. I ordered this between the time that um, Dumb Thumbs FPV made his video and before Nick Burns made his. So I've only tried this one. Um, one thing Nick mentioned was that the trash can frame, the canopy that he got for that, did not provide any uh, protection for the camera lens, and I know he's broken one and he flies pretty fast. This one provides a little bit of protection, and I've been in some crashes, and so far so good. I haven't broken the lens yet, although I have been in some crashes, I think, where I've hit the lens, but I've been lucky and have not broken the lens yet. The board I'm using is the same one that they recommended. It is the Happy Model Crazy B F4 Pro V3. Of course, the VTX is the SharkBite Whoop VTX, the TX 5S.1. The camera is the Runcam SharkBite Nano Digital FPV camera. The motors are the Happy Model EX 1102 9000 kV with the 1.5 millimeter shaft. The props are the Gemfan 1636-4 40mm four-blade whoop propellers that accept the 1.5mm shaft. And as far as the build goes, I can briefly cover that. I know Dumb Thumbs FPV had mounted this whoop board upside down to get it to fit. What I did was I ordered some M2 O-rings and they fit up under here. I put one on each of the four places where the canopy mounts on there. It provides a little bit of space so this will fit over these connectors and such. Um, one thing Nick Burns had talked about on his build was that his uh, MIPI cable would come loose. Um, on this one, this particular canopy, of course it's probably not for the trash can, but for this frame, this passes over this and I've been uh, you can probably tell from my videos, I do a lot of gaps and I crash a lot, and I have not had this thing come off just yet. So, so far, so good with that. And I also mounted the board in this orientation 
where the UFL connector is up here so that this particular antenna passes under the frame in two places and I have not had this come loose or come off yet. The MIPI cable comes from the camera and then it makes a loop in here and then it just plugs right in there. The other thing I did, which I know it's not completely necessary, but I put a capacitor on here. Uh, one thing I need to do is probably add a little hot glue to hold this in place because right now it's just kind of dangling here. I haven't had any trouble with this um, popping out or anything like that, but it would probably be good to secure it down. I, I did this mainly just because I was being a little bit cautious, um, and also I wanted to uh, potentially reduce any noise entering the flight controller, so I'll probably secure that down. I used a waffle cap cap, and basically the wires come from the positive and negative on the flight controller and it comes to the cap cap and then the wire continues on for the positive and negative and goes to the VTX. Um, one thing Dum Thumbs FPV did was he ran the the receiver antenna up out the front over this thing. I, I did that but it kept kind of floating out here and I was afraid that maybe in an impact I would end up uh, severing it or something so I hadn't I'm going to figure out how to strap it down with something pretty simple, but for now I just did a zip tie and a heat shrink and heat, sh heat shrink it up here. So basically when I hit, it'll hit the zip tie and, um, you know, it won't sever the cord, but this is just for now until I figure out a better solution. Um, another thing I did, this frame comes with a um, battery strap thing, but I was afraid this it would be a challenge to get this 450 milliamp hour battery in and out that I've been using with this thing. So what I did temporarily until I find a better solution, I just put a zip tie around here and two uh, little rubber bands to hold the battery in place there. As far as the motor connectors, I removed the connectors, which was a total weight of 0.75 grams. Now, one thing I could have also done was remove a little length from the motor wires. And Nick uh, did that on his channel, and it was about a half a gram of savings. But I did not do that just because I have this uh, thought that maybe I'll use these motors on a different build in the future. So I didn't want to uh, cut the wire short, which really uh, is probably unlikely. I should have just cut them short. So I ran the motor wires from the top view. It would be above um, this prop support. And then I just to eat up the rest of the slack. I crossed them. So the motor wire comes here and it comes around here and then to, to these motor pads and then this one does the same and then goes around and goes to the other motor pads. Um, saved a little bit of weight and I may end up uh, cutting the wire shorter in the future, but for now I just uh, did it like this and it's been, been working pretty good so far. Now there's about a 10 gram difference in the batteries I used. The first battery I used was the the 300 milliamp hour cotter battery just takes it up to about 60 61 grams and then the flight footage at the end of the video you'll see was this 450 which takes it up to 72 grams but as i said earlier i am looking forward to finding a good 350 milliamp hour battery to try that might be the good sweet spot now i start off this flight and i notice it's making some kind of funny sound so I do a little lap and then I land back and check it out and nothing's cut in the prop or anything so I take back off and continue the flight. And I didn't mention this during the footage at the start of the video but yeah we have no kitchen cabinet doors. My wife decided to repaint the cabinet so it's a bit of a construction mess right now and I also have another project going on. I'm remodeling the middle bathroom down the hallway so we tend to have projects going uh, left and right sometimes, but um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, even if that's why is there a trampoline in the middle of my living room? Yeah, we got four kids, so we have a trampoline in our living room. No, but really, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask, or if you have any comments or anything you'd like to share, please uh, do comment that, um, and I would appreciate that. Um, let me know if this was uh, beneficial or if or if you enjoyed it or if you didn't, um, yeah, any feedback is good. But uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I will let the rest of this play out, and thank you for watching.